Hey what's going on guys, a common question I get with any monster taming title is, what's the best team? Now the thing is, this is a much more loaded question than a lot of people realize. There are tons of combinations and different type synergies between monsters, and there are often times no definitive answer for this question. Nexomon is no exception to this, however, I will say that the rarity system does make it a bit easier to come up with a more objective conclusion, but not a definitive one. This video will not give you six Nexomon and say, here you go, these are the best, because I believe that that would be a bit disingenuous given all of the combinations present and the complexity that comes with judging a team of six, rather than, let's say, uh, discussing who the best starter is, where you're only comparing one monster to a few others as opposed to six specific ones that'll work well together out of 300. Anyways, this video is going to set you up for success and give you a pool of Nexomon to base your team around, as well as some tips to maximize your destructive capabilities. That said, let's dive on in. Okay, so it's important to note that Mega Rare and Special Tier Nexomon are the cream of the crop, however, Rare Nexomon are also no slouch. I've explained the rarity system multiple times at this point, so you can check out this video linked below for a more comprehensive look. That said, between the Special Tier and Mega Rare Tier, there are a total of 14 Nexomon lines of three, one of each type per rarity as well. Maintaining type diversity is very important as it'll allow you to deal with more situations efficiently. Something of note is that move diversity in Nexomon 1 is a lot more complex than that of Extinction, and a great example of this is the Pachara line, while weak to mineral and plant, it does get access to wind type moves so it can definitely be useful in otherwise damning situations. Another thing to note is that normal types are very powerful and useful in Nexomon 1 as they have no weaknesses or strengths, meaning that they're able to excel relatively well in all situations, making for a good wild card. The Velazy line, for example, gets access to moves like Disruption Ray, which is a very powerful attack, especially because of its typing, it'll hit everything for neutral damage. No need to worry about resistances there. It also gets access to Headbutt, while not super strong, can inflict Confusion, which in my opinion is the most powerful status condition in the game. Speaking of which, load up on Nexomon with status condition attacks as they're OP as hell. I personally don't like moves like Sleep that only have 40% accuracy. However, if you look at moves like Headbutt, the accuracy says 40%, but in all actuality, that's actually the chance of causing confusion while the attack itself always hits. I think the Feather line is really good as well because it gets access to moves like Turbulent Toss that can cause confusion and Mud Spray that can lower enemy accuracy. You can also use moves like Crescent Wings to boost your attack as well, and it even gets access to a sustained move in the form of Healing Current, allowing it to survive for those nasty revenge turns that the enemies get. In terms of type spreads, depending on how diverse the move pools are on your team will change how you want to spread your Nexomon types. There are six types total, plus normal, meaning seven, so if you do take a normal type, you'll be lacking one of the elemental types. Each elemental type carries with it two resistances, two strengths, and two weaknesses, so if you do decide to go without any normal types, you can actually create quite a clean spread. I think that having a healthy mix of status spammers, high power attackers, and Nexomon that use barrier moves is really important. Barrier moves are basically like the move protect from Pokemon, except it lasts multiple turns. This will make it so that while active, you'll only take one damage from the next incoming attack, though you are susceptible to status conditions. An example of one of these moves is Rock Wall. The reason I say this is good is because it'll allow you to block incoming damage after knocking out an enemy should you set it up. This can further be used in conjunction with Confusion, so you get free turns to set those up. The Blizzle line is excellent for this. In terms of all-out attackers, I've got to say the entire roster of Mega Rare Nexomon have great overall stats, which get even better with every evolution. I personally really like the Fluzard line in particular due to its high base attack alongside moves like Energy Blast, Tidal Wave, and even Swift, which increases its evasion for good measure. I mean, it also just looks really cool, so there's that too. But yeah, guys, I hope this guide was somewhat useful regarding creating your own team whilst keeping team composition in mind. The points I really want to get across are try to have as much move diversity as possible, try to have as much status condition spam as possible, and focus on special tier and mega rare Nexomon, and of course legendaries when you can get them, they're obviously the best. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you are a fan of Nexomon or the monster taming genre in general, definitely make sure to subscribe for more and join the community. Special thanks to our patrons, especially our mythical backers, Jim Hamilton and Steelcase. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.